Hey guys, so we have to transition to an ecological way of life. Hey, this is Gary McDougall from Grow the Food You Love, and I'm here today to talk about this transitioning to an ecological way of life because there's no, there are no simple solutions to our predicament on this planet. And what I mean by that, and a lot of people don't know this, right? Like a lot of people know we have to get off fossil fuels. A lot of people know that, that our, our, our food systems are sprayed with chemicals. They know this, they wanna grow healthy food. That's why I started Grow the Food You Love. See, we started transitioning from, from a consumeristic lifestyle or a typical lifestyle to a really simplistic lifestyle, one where we produced and grew a lot of our food. Now we grow a lot of our food year round. And slowly over time, it's grown. And the ideas have grown and our reach has grown. This is what we're thinking now. What we're thinking now is I need to get beyond growing food. I need to reach people who, who know about this stuff or know that we need to do things differently as a species. And there's numerous reasons. I'm going to talk about them. These are the reasons why we have to change. Okay. So we know that our, that our foods are sprayed. You may or may not know that, that you know, as a result of tillage and spray spraying food, that you know, landscapes are being de degraded. Um, nitrogen and phosphorus and, and potassium, all these different nutrients that, that are put, or chemi synthetic chemicals that are put on foods are washing into waterways, they're washing into streams, they're polluting streams, they're killing habitat for things like fish, and then they're washing into the oceans. They're going into oceans, they're creating dead zones. And if the oceans are dead, obviously they're not gonna produce things like fish. So that's affecting our, that's affecting all of us. We can't continue to pollute our food systems and, and, and destroy, you know, soil and have soil erosion and stuff and sustain our life on this planet. So we have to transition off that, but there's, it's, it gets even bigger. See, I started going down this path of regeneration and saw that, that it's not just food and it in soil that, that we're destroying, but in our food system, there's also farmers. Farmers are suffering greatly. So food's now a commodity. It's controlled by banks. It's controlled by big corporations. And, and farmers are barely making enough to get by. So a lot of farmers are under a lot of stress. They're under a lot of debt. And, and one of the, I mean, the horrendous things that are happening to farmers, one of the leading causes of farmers' death rate now is suicide. So I have to speak to this because it's really sad. And it's really disgusting. But that's the reality of the world we live in. It gets worse. Okay. And this is why I, need, I needed to get I needed to start speaking to the bigger picture is because I'm no longer comfortable recognizing that here, like I live in a very privileged community. It's a very well educated. People have a lot of, you know, a lot of material goods, nice houses, cars, Teslas, you name it. But is that, is our lifestyle sustainable? I recently reached out to a group in town. It's called one planet region and, I, and I'm partnering with them and we're developing we're developing something right now. It's like a community learning participatory group where we get to explore these ideas. The idea about exploring the ideas though, is to explore them in a way that we can then be a part. We can empower ourselves. We can, we can empower our voice and we can start making change at a systemic level. We need systems change because the way we're living right now is consuming about five planets worth of materials. So on a finite planet, if we're extracting and extracting and extracting materials, whether that be metals, minerals for things like lithium batteries, you know, cars, there's over a billion cars on the planet right now. We're getting those materials from the planet. We're on a finite planet. Eventually those materials will run out. More so the materials running out on a finite planet. There's also pollution. There's CO, too much CO2 in the atmosphere. There, like I said, in waterways, there's pollution, but there's also, it takes a heck of a lot of water and cut to, to produce things like lithium and, and iron and all this stuff. So we need to live differently on this planet. This I know. Somebody commented today in a local page that we have to transition. He said, we're not going to get off industry. We're not going to be a non-industrial city. It's just not going to happen. We have to go to, to nuclear fusion. I heard that. And I'm like, okay, maybe, because I don't know anything about nuclear fu fusion. But what I do know is we're heading for extinction because we're consuming too many minerals and, and materials. We're polluting the planet too much. There's too much CO2 in the atmosphere. Insects are disappearing and dying. You know, forests are being cut down, habitats being lost. We can't, we're not going to be able to sustain this lifestyle forever. So when somebody makes an argument like, you know, industry is here to stay, we can't go backwards. I'm not talking about going backwards. I'm talking about preventing mass extinction. So this is, this is heavy stuff, right? It's heavy stuff. It's caused me a lot of grief. I've gone through a lot of that grief. And on the other side of grief is inspiration. It's led me to this moment, speaking this message to you. It's recognizing that we need to make systems change or we hold on to wealth, we hold on to industry, and we do that and we lead our species to extinction. 
or <laughs> we pause, hit the stop button, we walk away. Uh, I was listening to a, to a speaker this past week. I'd never heard of this before, but he said we have to commit class suicide. Now, that sounds terrible, but I, I like to think of walk away because my wife and I left our jobs a few years back because we were going through kind of a midlife crisis and we felt like we needed new inspiration in our life. I don't know if you can relate to that, but we were feeling dead in our jobs and we, we decided we had to make a, a shift. And we didn't even know what we were jumping into. We were jumping without a parachute. We need to be creative again. We needed to feel alive again. In our 20s, we both before we met each other, we both traveled the world. And we felt alive. It was amazing. It was a part of life. Yes, it's scary. Yes, it's uncertain. But if we continue as a species on this path of consumption and materialism and, and polluting the planet, uh, wealth isn't going to mean anything. And neither is, neither is industry if it doesn't sustain human life. So we need to make changes. I'm going to make one more point why we need to make changes is we have a very, and I, I was, I was going there. I don't know why I changed the subject, but we're, we're very privileged in our society. We have a lot of stuff. We have nice houses, a roof over our head. We have heat. I have, I have this lighting in the background. We get, we, we can go to the grocery. I got grocery stores all around me where I can get healthy food. There are billions of people on this planet that live on less than a dollar a day. And a lot of them will work for our food, our materials, our phones, our goods, our stuff, and we benefit from it. So there's a lot of inequality in society. So that's not comfortable with me. I'm not comfortable telling my kids about stuff like that. And it's so much worse. And I don't even want to get into the details because it just sickens me just thinking about it. And I don't want to gross you out. And if you're still watching this video, I freaking high five <laughs> because it takes a lot of courage and a lot of resolve to be, to be able to face our predicament on this planet right now. So that's why I needed to go live and do these live videos. I'm, I'm practicing, put myself out there. Uh, I would encourage people just not to listen and consume, but produce, produce food, produce content, but don't just consume because I think it's in the material self where we're constantly looking and consuming stuff, right? But when we get up to that higher levels of consciousness, that, that awareness that we need to make change, we can start producing and make systems change or make change in a way that's going to help our planet. So one of the ways that we're doing that is we're growing food. What are some other things that need to change? We need to change our food system to a regenerative food system. It needs to be regenerative because obviously we can't erode soil forever. If we're going to feed human beings, it needs we need to get the food from healthy food systems. So one of the ways we do that in our house is we feed all our food scraps to the chickens. The chickens then create manure. We hot compost the manure, kill all the weed seeds, all the disease in it, and then we feed our soil. And our soil, as a result, gets healthier and healthier every single year. We don't use any synthetic fertilizers or chemical sprays. Uh, we just create a healthy environment. Just like with children, we're just giving the conditions for living beings, plants, and our children, giving the living conditions for them to grow and fully express themselves. So we get lots of food out of our front yard year round. What other changes do we have to make? How about equality? How about like people of all color, of all nations, live a very good quality of life? Good education, uh, they live in safety, uh, they're fed well. Maybe we need to stay out of people's business on other continents, man. Like us Europeans can stay in Europe. I'm not in Europe. I'm in Canada. But my, my ancestors, know your history. That's a, that's a really important part. My ancestors were push off, pushed off the continent. They were pushed to the coast. Some, a lot of people died. This is 200 years ago. A lot of people died. A lot of, the lucky ones got on a boat and got to Canada. So we were pushed off our land. So know your history. That's a big piece. Regenerative agriculture, that's a big piece. Take care of yourself. Take care of your thoughts, your feelings. The better you think, the better you feel, the better you're going to act. So if you're going through grief, if you have lots of sadness or you have lots of anger, recognize that is grief. And that's not necessarily who you are. That's something that you're going through. And it's important to acknowledge. It's, ex it's important to, to express. But it's also important to work through it to get to a place, to your best place best feeling place, best thinking place so that we can take action in a way that is working towards change, that, that sustains life in our life. I'm a father. I'm a husband. I have three kids. I want to be the best person I can be and support them and love them in the best way and be present with them as best I can. Speaking of which, I should probably get back to my kids. They just got home from school. I should get there soon. So it's a long video. I'm going on about this, but it's about transitioning to a more ecological way of living. How can we do that? Something I see in our community, another way we can do it is I see people thinking it's a solution to going into 
new technological solutions. Now, I'm all for reducing carbon emissions, but maybe instead of like net zero emissions, maybe we just have to reduce our carbon as much as possible. For example, you know, we have a car, we have a six cylinder car. I don't feel comfortable with that. So I always thought I would get like a, like a, I thought maybe our next car would be, you know, electric vehicle. Maybe it won't. I mean, maybe it will, but maybe we're just not going to drive. Maybe we're going to walk more or even bike more. We are, we already walk more and bike more because we want to reduce our emissions, but we also want to reduce reduce our impact on the planet in a negative way. So recognizing, like I had a friend of mine, for example, Max, who's in Nevada right now, and he's trying to stop a lithium mine. And the reason he's trying to stop a lithium mine is, is he recognized that for that mine, for them to extract the lithium from that site, it's going to be two square miles. Everything in those two square miles will be dead. So all the life forms, all the plants, all the animals, everything will be dead. And it's going to require 25,000 gallons a day of diesel to extract that lithium. And it's going to require something like 250 million gallons of water a year because you need lots of water and diesel to extract this stuff. That's not sustainable. So the idea that we're going to transition to one point something billion electric vehicles on this planet and sustain life, a lot of life would have to die for that. A lot of water is going to get polluted. A lot of, you know, a lot of diesel would get burned. So we can wait for catastrophe and there's already lots of catastrophes happening. You think of COVID, you think of, you know, CO2, global warming, all this stuff, inequality, people dying because the system benefits few and a lot of suffer. We can start transitioning though to more just, a more ecological society. So what can you do? What part of it will you do? I think the big part is first and foremost, we have to take care of ourselves. We have to sort through our thoughts and our feelings, recognize that we are powerful and that we can change our being and our way of being. That's number one. But number two, what emerges for you in that transition to an ecological society? What part, you know, and if you don't know, I just say, just start taking action. I've, I've been taking action on this, doing lives like this. I was nervous as a mother. Somebody asked me today if, if they can, if I could partner with them around sharing their films and I, and I host like, like a Q and a afterwards. I'd love to do something like that. That's aligned with the work that I want to do. Um, but the person said, you know, I'm an introvert. I don't really want to do it. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm an introvert too. Like I'm, I'll put myself out there because I feel like I have to take action and I have to help this planet. But a lot of the times I like to spend my time inwardly. So let's not make it, let's not limit ourselves with our self limiting beliefs. Like you might think that you're an introvert. I know I'm an introvert, but that doesn't mean I have to hold back all the time. Sometimes let's put ourselves out there. Let's take action. Let's get inspired first and foremost, and then see what want, what emerges from us, what wants to come through us. Yeah, I could go on and I could talk about this stuff forever, but but just know that like, yeah. So I run a Facebook page called Grow the Food You Love. If you want to grow food, come join me over there. Otherwise, just join me on Facebook, Gary McDougal. And I'll be talking about this stuff. I'll be sharing inspiring stuff. And join me every Wednesday here on YouTube where I'll be sharing things about transitioning to a more ecological society. Why would I do that? Why would I? I think I explained that pretty well. But I was last year, in the last couple of years, it's been a grow the food you love. But I started to see the bigger picture that our species, to prevent extinction, we need to transition to something more ecological. Now, I'm inspired to do that too, and I have a lot of hope and I have a lot of inspiration about it because we can reverse so much of the damage. If we stop consuming so much and we start regenerating, bringing our, you know, our soil back to life, our ecosystems back to life, our forests back to life, greening, greening the desert is, is a project that really inspired me, that really got me thinking about taking action, really got me thinking about, okay, we can turn this stuff around, go from a place of being depressed depressed or being in a place of doom where it's like it's hopeless to a place of like no wait a minute i can start taking action as i start taking action you start seeing so many other people that are doing this work it starts getting inspiring it creates a wave it gives you a sense that we can make a difference so anyway it's 14 minutes this video is way too long thank you so much if you've watched it and yeah i'd like to like to hear some feedback I'll probably turn the comments off on this. Come join me on Facebook and we will have conversations about this stuff. See you soon. I have to end the stream now. <laughs> See if I know how to do that. Your stream will stop immediately. You'll no longer be live. End it.